Hello everybody, my name is Steve Bishop and I'm going to start doing a uh, series in Programming in Access 2013. Um, I have been a developer of Access for only about just a little over a year, but uh, I have worked on some very large projects and uh, I think you could definitely learn from what my experience has been because I think for people who are especially starting out, um, you'll run into pitfalls. You'll start running into problems, and running into issues, and those are the same types of things that I've had to learn. I've had no formal training in developing access. I just, I literally learned straight off of what was on the internet and available to me through watching video series like this one. And uh, I figured I'd give back to the community a little bit by making my own, especially because I think I run into some of the same pitfalls that most people do. And I'm sure during this process of, uh, of going through the Programming in Access 2013 series, I will run into some of those pitfalls and you'll see me encounter them and you'll learn how I overcome them and kind of how you sometimes have to backtrack uh, or modify how you planned on doing something in order to make it work uh, the way that you originally intended. So let's go ahead and get started here. So what is Access? Um, some of you may already know, some of this may be old news, but a lot of people may not really know what Access is. Well, Access is essentially a relational database system with rapid, uh, rapid development, basically, or RAD. And with Access, it makes it very, very easy to develop both a way of maintaining your data, if you were a large business or a small business and you just wanted to, say, keep track of sales or customers or a, uh, you know, a, a client list of some sorts, Access is really good for that. Um, it allows you to develop um, interface for, your, for yourself so you can enter in data into the, these uh, objects in the background called tables, which we'll get to in just a little bit. But it's a way of organizing your data and, and making an application for yourself very quickly and easily to get to that data and put it in. So why should you use Access? Well, you should probably be using Access if you're looking for something that's going to be a very quick way to design and develop your data and organize it with easy access you can print reports you can you know you can do just about anything in access with your data uh, which makes it a very very wonderful application for you to learn and if you're plan it's it's a good jumping start too if you're planning on getting into some of the more developed uh, programming languages uh, knowing how to organize your data and develop forms create reports etc is going to be very helpful for you in the future if you plan on going into the .NET framework so who uses Access? Well, Access can be used by uh, mostly, I would say, smaller businesses or single person just trying to organize their data, you know, keep track of certain uh, financial things or uh, keeping track of client lists, etc. So if you're in the, if you're interested in trying to organize your data, keep track, you know, manage your clients, you can, you know, print invoices, that sort of thing. That's really probably the primary example, but really access can be useful for just about every situation and scenario. You don't even have to use the data, uh, the data tables itself. You could just have a simple form that has object-oriented programming, which we will get into a little bit later, and I'm probably using some big terms, but uh, Access is really exciting because it integrates so many of those wonderful, useful features that you will find in other programming languages. So do you need any necessary skills uh, getting up to Access? Well, hopefully you understand English well enough um, <laughs> because that's the language I speak. I don't honestly speak any other languages. Uh, you need to be able to have some pretty good logical skills in it, and this is no... I'm not trying to put down anybody, but there are certain people that just may not be able to catch on to what Access is about or programming in general. And it's n it may just take some time for those people to get used to it, but I know that there are people in here that would just, the moment they start thinking about organizing my data, Visual Basic, oh my gosh, I don't really want to get into that. They get overwhelmed and they don't really want to do it. But other than that, I mean, as long as you have access on your computer, which uh, comes with office, professional, uh, or home and business, uh, as long as you have that on your computer, that's really all you need. Um, you don't need to have any, at least for this particular course, I'm going to try to walk you through as best as I can uh, how to go about creating and designing access with 
as few skills as possible required up up front because I started out with no skills so if I can do it I think anybody else can so I'm going to divide access into three basic sections and these different sections really integrate with one another um, but it's helpful if we if we organize things and try to cover them in uh, in some sort of organization but you'll see later on how these all integrate with one another and the first thing is you really have something called a database this is uh, kind of your um, this is where your data is actually stored okay and it's, it's essentially your database uh, so where does where does your database what is a database where does it go where does your data go and that could be any number of different types of database systems and these are just some of them these are the more popular ones you got Oracle MySQL uh, MS which is Microsoft SQL um, access itself is actually a database system which access is called is runs on something called the jet engine so you may hear that term frequently uh, whenever you're dealing with access so Oracle MySQL MS SQL and access are all different types of database systems there are many others there's Postgre uh, you know there's um, um, you know, honestly, uh, none of them, none of the other ones are coming off the top of my head. But you can really, there's a bunch of ones out there called NoSQL, which are really interesting. Um, there's also other types of ways that you can store information, like XML files or JSON, which are more uh, web-based, web-oriented ways of storing your data. But primarily, your relational databases are Oracle, MySQL, MS SQL, and Access. These are the ones that we'll be focusing on during this course. So in databases, there will be types of data um, because obviously not all data is the same. Sometimes you have numbers. Sometimes you have geographical locations. Sometimes you have what we call string or text, which is just, you know, like say, for example, an address is made up of both numbers and letters. Well, that would actually be considered string or text. Uh, and when it comes to databases, they're stored as a form of text Different types of data can be like NVAR car, uh, or in access it's just text, um, or you can have numeric, or float, uh, or double, and we'll get to all those different data types a little bit later, but just understand that your different kinds of data will have to be, you will need to know what what is the type of data that you're planning on putting into your database. In, a, in any particular circumstance um, and it'll become pretty obvious to you as you start going along what it is that's going to happen so you also will need to know when it comes to databases how is it organized what first of all um, you have these things called tables and we'll get into all of that but essentially your data gets stored into these tables which are if you've ever dealt with Excel uh, you'll 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 see these tables and they'll make a lot of sense to you because tables are very similar to the way that uh, information is organized in Excel. Uh, you have cells, you have columns, you have rows, and you know it's really very simple as far as how those tables are func function. Relationships are the way in which different tables interact with each other because you may have, say for example, an address and you want to break down your address into uh, different sections. Maybe you want to have uh, your addresses, the first line is in one table, the second line is in another table, and your zip codes are stored in another table. And how all of those interact and become one, uh, one piece of information is very important. You need to be able to know, I have this customer and this is their address. You may store the customer names in one table and the address information in another table, which is a very common situation. We'll go into the relationships, obviously, in great detail. So how do you get to the data? And that's where we have these things called queries. You have a special, what they call SQL language, or SQL. Um, and the SQL, the um, SQL is just a, a query language that basically uh, is a type of coding in a way which organizes your data, tells the database how you want your data, what kind of data you're going for and how that you want it organized and you can do calculations and such. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with your queries to really organize your data and tell your, tell your database is exactly the format in which you want that data to come back. 
The second part that we'll be going over is the user interface. This is things like how do you get the person to actually put in data. Obviously you've got a database in the background, you want to be able to have somebody put data into that data, into that database. So you have these things called forms, which allow somebody to type data in and store it, etc. Then obviously you need to know how that information is supposed to be displayed to the user, okay? And that's primarily in the form of reports and forms. And then you also have, and I put exporting as part of the user interface because essentially what what you're doing with an export is you're trying to either interact with another storage system of data which the user then will deal with on their own. Uh, sometimes you can have some automatic integration like if you want to print something uh, or if you want to store it to PDF but usually once you export a file out to another system then the user has to interact with that so it's kind of a user interface uh, way of dealing with the data once it's put out. And you will have different ways that this information gets displayed to the user in, in the exports. So the third and final section we're going to talk about is the code behind. And this is this consists of VBA. And there is also something called macros, which we'll get to in just a second. But VBA is essentially Visual Basic for Applications. And this is a uh, this VBA is used in all Office applications, including uh, Excel, Word, uh, and, and Access. All use VBA. So if you know VBA, which is just essentially Visual Basic 6 uh, with a little application twist. So if you know any Visual Basic 6, which has been discontinued by Microsoft, by the way, uh, VBA will be very, very simple to you. And actually, that's one of the nice things about learning from the VBA standpoint is that you actually are learning VB6, which was the uh, version of Visual Basic prior to the .NET releases. And code behinds can be, you know, your, your VBA is basically organized into either modules, uh, oh, looks like I'm missing, oh, there we go, or classes. Uh, and classes are a form of object-oriented programming. And VBA uh, uses classes and can use object-oriented programming in order to design your uh, your code and how things are interact interact with the with uh, the person who's using your application. Macros are a simple way of um, they're a very kind of dumbed down version. And not to say that they're not complex and that they can't do complex things. They're just kind of a very simple way of um, of doing things and interacting with your application that, uh, you know, if you want to, like, move back and forth between screens, but you want to do it quickly without having to do all the VBA code in the background, you can do that with macros. I personally tend to stay away from macros. I don't really find them useful in any way, but certainly some people can. They will not be covered in this course. I don't really want to get into macros because, honestly, everything you can do in macros, you can do with VBA and uh, VBA is just much more extensive and gives you a little bit more control over how everything operates in the background. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and get started with the first section here, and uh, I hope you guys are as excited as I am to get this, this party started. Thank you very much.